What's going on guys and welcome to another video. Today we're going to give my Mark V GTI a little bit of a facelift. So in previous videos you've probably seen the front of it, uh, you've seen like the badge and how it's looking and you've seen that the front lights have got some weird tint film on it. So today I've got a few things and I've got a few ideas to spruce up the front end of the Mark V GTI just a little bit so stay tuned. So guys here's the front end of my Mark V GTI currently, looking, currently looking a bit sorry for itself. Um, I've actually taken the badge out, so from previous videos, or what, I'll just flash up here. You can see that there was a um, black badge with red behind on it. Now, I'm trying to de-chav this as much as possible, and I kind of want to go back to standard with the badge, but I don't have a standard badge, and I'm not sure if they'll fit in these eBay grills. So what I've done is I've pulled that out, and I'm going to actually spray paint the back of it, uh, black and then try and put a silver badge on the front of it um, Obviously these headlights here have got that dodgy tint film on that you see up close. It's a bit odd So we'll try and get these out as well and take that off so You've got a fresh grill for the front with completely smooth number plate holes on it uh, So it's just completely smooth and I've also got a private registration plate to go on the car, which is sick um, I've also got a little rubber splitter lip just on the bottom just to make that front end just look a little bit lower so yeah, we'll switch over to spraying that rear uh, spraying that front badge now um, and just get that stripped and sorted. So guys, this is the front badge that came off the Golf. Now see red behind, black front. So that just comes off like so. And now I'm left with this red thing here, which I'm gonna try and spray black. So I'm not actually gonna start sanding this down and primering it and painting it and all that kind of crap. What I have got in the garage is an old can of Plasti Dip. So, if anybody has used this before, it's basically a rubber coating that takes really well and you can just peel it off when you're done with it. When it's on the car, it's not really going to be very obvious anyway. Um, it'll be covered up by the Volkswagen badge um, and obviously be inset into the grill. So that shouldn't be too much of a problem. So what I am going to do is just get this badge all cleaned up and then just give it a few coats of Plasti Dip and just just see what happens this is silver badge from um, just a normal mark 5 uh, and that's gonna go yeah you know that would look awful to be honest I, I don't like that at all but I also just realized that I don't think it fits um, that clip there uh, and that doesn't go in the middle there. All right, so guys, what we're going to have to do is I'm going to have to bodge this up and chip that little nibbly bit off there and just glue it on to this when it's dry, which <sighs> it saves buying a new one. And everyone's going to be like, oh my God, why? No, 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 just get a new one, do it properly. But you know what? At the end of the day, this is a budget build. It's my car and it's ill. I'm sure it'll be fine once it's on there. Anyway, let's get this painted and see where we go from there. So guys, here we are with garage plasti dipping. Um, this is my makeshift spray booth. Uh, I have sanded down and washed all of this up, so hopefully it should take nicely. So we'll give it a shake. And we can hopefully get this to work. So, give it a good coat. So it turns out the spray nozzle is a bit battered and it's spraying up in the air, so I have to clean it out quickly. A few moments later. And so I set about spraying the badge. There's not too much to see here. I just gave it another coat about every 10 to 15 minutes, slowly layering it up over time until I had something that I was kind of happy with. But you'll have to wait till the big reveal to see how it came out because really it didn't look that great in this state. So guys, we've got a rather sorry looking Mark V GTI in desperate need of a clean and the badge is now missing. But obviously that has been painted. We're gonna save putting the badge back in, obviously, until the new grill goes on. First things first, we'll get the bonnet up. And we will work on getting that grill out because if I remember correctly from videos that I've seen online, we've got to take the grill out um, to get to the clips on the headlights. So first things first, we'll get that grill off and take it from there. So guys, the grill is now out. Uh, there it is. It turns out that there's two clips at the bottom of your grill. 
which should tie into um, a couple of brackets just there. You can see one there and one there. Um, turns out whoever had put this grill in had not done that at all. So there was no screws in the bottom, just literally two in the top, lightly holding it in, which is a bit shady. Um, but now that's out, we can have a look at how we can get the headlights out from there. So in order to get the headlights out, the bumper's got to come off. So this is just me going around under the wheel arches, underneath the bumper and taking out all the little Torx bits. No need to jack the car up to do this, just turn the wheel and everything should be accessible. I'm not going to show you exactly which screws to take out underneath the bumper. Uh, there's plenty of tutorials online, which should be able to show you if that is what you need. So guys, the bumper is now off and on the garden. Uh, I do have headlight washer jets in this spec uh, and instead of removing all the headlight washers, I just unplugged it from the washer bottle. Um, I mean, half of it's leaked on the floor, but we know we've got a screen wash bottle there, filling it back up, which can just go back in after once I've put the plug back in. Um, probably easier than pulling all the headlight washer jet stuff out. But anyway, the bumper is here. And to be honest, now that it's on the garden, you can definitely see that it's done 120,000 miles. Um, I mean, when you get up close, it's, you know, it's not great, but from afar, it's okay. Uh, this bit of damage here was when it was snowy, I accidentally skidded it off the road into a ditch um, and took off the paint boat down there. Yeah, what I think we're gonna do first is just patch up that bit of damage on the bottom, just with some touch up paint that I've got in the garage. It's not gonna look the best in the world, but at the end of the day, it's not, you know, absolute show winning car and it's gonna look better than it did like that without getting a full respray. Fortunately, it doesn't look like it's taken it all the way back to plastic. It looks like we've still got some primer on there. So hopefully I should just be able to go over with this mixed tornado red paint and just blob it on and hopefully it'll work. It's not gonna look great, but it'll look a damn sight better than it did. So I'm just gonna go around and basically do this all over. So very quickly, on from first glance, that corner is repaired. I'm just gonna put my hand in front of it because from afar, it just takes the edge off it really. You can't notice it as much, not until you get up close, but I'm not gonna show you up close because it is a bit embarrassing. But in my opinion, you know, just for a little budget repair job, um, I think it'll be all right. I mean, I am planning on getting an edition 30 split for this at some point in the future. Um, but for now, just until that happens, I think that'll just tide us over. So yeah, the next job, will be to put on the new grill. Now this is probably the big one. I'm super excited to do this. So yeah, I'll whip it out. Let's have a look at it. So guys, here is the new smooth grill. Um, I've actually got some black GTI badges in the garage as well. I'm gonna put on instead of that standard one, but that looks so sick. Um, I've actually ceramic coated this with a bit of leftover ceramic coating that I had left from doing the wheels uh, on the Golf that you'll see in the video up here. So that is now ceramic coated. You can see how vibrant the red is, uh, how black the black is. And if you compare that to this old one here, ugh, it's just looking all dead and nasty. And the super exciting thing, here's the new one. And it is 15% smaller than a standard one. Um, so obviously it's a five digit reg, which means it can be shorter that way, no problem. But I've actually shrunk the whole thing 15%. So it should fit just nicely in the grill there. Right, so now that the bumper is off uh, and that grill is all sorted out, um, ready to go back on the car, we need to get the headlights out uh, because with the bumper on, you can't get that to the headlights. So the next step is to sort those headlights out and strip off the tint film on them and the headlights can go back in and then the bumper can go on. So next step, remove the headlights. So it's just a case of going around and removing all the T25 Torx bits from around the headlights on both sides. You may be actually be able to do this without removing the bumper. Um, you may just be able to pop out your headlight washer jets and get to it from there. But as mine was coming off anyway, I thought I may as well take them all out at the same time. So now that we've got one of the headlights out, Things I saw online suggested using brake cleaner and just absolutely dousing the headlights in it and it should just start to come off. So that's what we'll try. After using a decent amount of brake cleaner and trying to scrub it off afterwards, it just didn't work in at all. I mean, it didn't shift it even in the slightest. 
So the brake cleaner on a rag just didn't work at all. So I have got this in the garage that I've had for ages um, and hopefully we'll try that and see where the brake cleaner's been. It's still definitely tinted. Um, I've tried to have a good old scrub and it just doesn't seem to have cut, it, cut into it at all. Um, but the top of it is a little bit crispy. So hopefully if we follow the, the stubborn defect removal pack instructions this should come off but who knows at this point and so I cracked on with the Maguire's headlight restoration kit it's actually quite a cool little bit of kit this it comes with well a few different polishing pads that you put in your drill uh, a few different pieces of sandpaper and some little bits of cutting compound but you just saw me a second ago trying to get it just with the cutting compound which didn't work so the next step is to just use the wet and dry paper in the box with some water and spray bottle and just go around and scrub the lights. I then used the trim removal tool just to see if I could flake off any of the loose bits. This didn't work either so I just went back over it with the cutting compound and the buffer and pretty much ended up back where I started. So guys quick update, um, after trying all of that crap with the headlights I've ended up giving up. I don't know what the hell they've done to it but I can't shift it with any type of sandpaper, um, I can't shift it with brake cleaner and in the end it's just ended up looking exactly the same as it did before doing the restoration kit you still see all the little black spots um they are definitely in the tint film because at the top here you can kind of see if i peel a bit off it does come off but this is really stubborn stuff and i don't really know what else to do with it so probably when i've got a bit more time um we'll go and have another crack uh, maybe you should use paint stripper or something um but for now we'll just leave it as it is and crack on with the rest of the car so obviously you just saw that the front bumper is back on the next thing that i need to do is make it look a little bit lower to the ground in true budget style we have got a love it or hate it mod here and that is the multi-fit rubber lip so here it is so this is the rubber lip um i'm sure everyone's seen these before and if not this was tenor off ebay i think it was um, all it is is a bit of 3M stripping and then you just stick it to the bottom of the bumper um, which just give you some fake lows. And so off we go. Pretty simple installation for this as it's well self-adhesive. So just make sure the area is clean and dry and just get to work lining it up. Always recommend just a bit of a test fit really so you get an idea of where it's going to sit because if you put it too far forward it might fall off. If you put it too far back it might just get lost and you may have wasted your time. But off camera, after I'd installed it, I actually put a couple of self-tapping screws in so it wouldn't fly off on the motorway and hit another car. So there is one more piece of the puzzle. And I actually, to be honest, I think that looks absolutely sick. Now, a lot of people will probably turn their nose up and say, oh, yeah, you know, that's shit, what, what, don't, you know, take that off. But to be honest, I think that actually looks sick, to be fair. And for a tenor, you know what, I literally can't complain at all. I think it actually just gives it some serious stance just smooths off the bottom end of the Mark V GTI. And so there is one final step, or one final piece of the puzzle, and that is the new smooth grill and private number plate. So let's get it on. And so reverse of removal really, get the grill in place, bang in the Torx bits, and away you go. You can see the black GTI badge on, and my well painted or bodged up Volkswagen badge on the front, and actually it looks really good. I actually left it for the day at this point because I realised it was getting dark and I'd forgot to tell the DVLA and my insurance about the number plate change. And to be honest, I was kind of admiring just how clean it looks without any plate on and I was toying with the idea of just running without a plate completely. Day two. So, it is now a new morning. I'll just give you a little update on what it looks like in full daylight. So there's the old grill. There's new front end and I think we can all agree that it looks absolutely sick and I'm over the moon with it really. Um, the badge is looking pretty decent as well actually so I'm not going to show you, well I mean you can even see it quite up close there where I've plastered it the inside. Um, quite funny really. So when I was actually spraying it, it looked absolutely terrible. Uh, the plastic dip trying to get in all the cracks and everything was not working it was super patchy it looks absolutely awful but i think i've saved it when it's now on the car 
Um, the other thing was the silver badge actually didn't fit whatsoever onto the aftermarket red backing. So I had to cut this little center section out, which if you get really up close, you can see it's a little bit um, yeah, rough. I actually don't think you can tell at all on that. I think that looks absolutely sick. Um, obviously we've got the black GTI badges on there as well. But the next thing is to make this all road legal and put on um, the new number plate front and back because at the moment we've just got it in the window and obviously still on the back of the car is the old number plate. So the final piece of the puzzle, just measuring up and making sure I get the sticky number plate in the correct position. This number plate is all British standard marked up, um, so as far as I'm aware it is all road legal even though it's 15% shrunk. But yeah, this is just me making sure it's on in the right place. Now I actually had a choice of three different number plates for the back of the car. You'll see which one I chose in a second, but let me know what you would have chosen in the comments below. Hadouken. So guys, that is the facelift complete. Um, got new front, uh, new front grille, private number plates, blacked out badges on the front, um, standard Volkswagen badge on there, front splitter, rear number plate. And so, just to conclude, this is what it looks like. Oh, one more thing, one more thing. Ah, that repair job on the bottom corner. It was actually that corner there. And honestly, until you get really close, you can't even tell, to be honest. I don't think anyone would notice that until you, you know, maybe never even notice that really. Um, so I'm just gonna avoid putting a pressure washer on that little part and hopefully it should stay um, all right for a while. I mean, I did put proper paint on it and then lacquer over the top of it, so that should hold for the foreseeable. Um, but yeah, guys, that will wrap it up for today's video. So um, as usual, if you like the content, please give us a like, uh, subscribe. So yeah, peace out, guys. Thanks for watching. Until next time.